Now let us examine the details of an action potential on a membrane potential graphic, a voltage recording. Here is our recording. Every cell has a resting membrane potential. The ex in our example, this cell has a membrane potential, resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolt. Every cell has a different threshold where so voltage gated sodium and potassium channels open. Uh, in our cell, this is about minus 55 millivolts. So let's examine the cell. The cell is at rest for some time and it is at the resting membrane potential level. Then comes a depolarization effect. This depolarization effect is by opening of mechanically or ligand gated sodium channels. Sodium moves into the cell and the cell depolarizes. If the amount of volt sodium if the amount of sodium ions moving into the cell is big enough, the depolarization will be big enough and the membrane potential will reach the threshold level. Here is our threshold level. We know that local potentials like the polarization can be at the, of different grades. So this local depolarization has to reach the threshold to produce the action potentials. Other types of depolarizations which are smaller are called sub-threshold stimuli and they are not able to produce an action potential. So when we reach the threshold for an action potential, three things start to happen. What are they? Three things start to happen. One and two is happening in the voltage gated sodium channels and three is happening in the voltage gated potassium channel. So at this point we need to talk a little bit about the voltage gated sodium channels. So the voltage gated sodium channel has what we call an activation gate and it also has an inactivation gate. So if you imagine my hands being the activation or the inactivation gate at the resting membrane potential inactivation gate is in the open form but activation gate is closed. So, when the threshold is reached, the activation gate starts to open at the same time that the inactivation gate starts to close. So, we can write here that activation gate start to open and inactivation gate of the voltage gated sodium channel start to close. The third event is happening in the voltage gated potassium channel which is only one, mm, one uh, gate. This is this gate of potassium channel is closed at the resting membrane potential and when the threshold potential is reached this gate starts to open. So voltage gated potassium channel gate starts to open. Why do I say they start to open? Because completing the opening or closure takes different times for different doors, gates in these ion channels. So the activation gate of salt voltage gated sodium channel is pretty quick compared to the other two doors here. So this is quickly completed. This one here is quickly completed which means 
Quickly after the threshold, water-gated sodium channel becomes open. This channel is later going to close, but closure is a slower effect compared to opening. At the same time, voltage-gated potassium channel starts to open, but opening of the voltage-gated potassium channel is a slow event compared to the opening of the voltage-gated sodium channel. And this is going to be important for the formation of our action potential. So here, if we repeat it, at the threshold, three events start to happen, written here, but only one of them is completed at the, around the threshold, which is the opening of the voltage-gated sodium channel. So at this point, through, the open, through all of the open voltage-gated sodium channels, sodium will rush into the cell, and entry of sodium into the cell produces further and further depolarizations. There is some detail about the depolarization phase of the action potential that we can talk about here. So, the voltage-gated sodium channels, not all of them have exactly the same threshold. Some of them have minus 55, some of them have minus 54, 53, for example. So, what is the effect of this? When you reach the threshold, leak channels, ligand-gated sodium channels, and some voltage-gated sodium channels are open. Sodium will go in through this, and cell will depolarize, let's say, reaching minus 54. When it reaches minus 54, now the cell reaches the threshold of even more voltage-gated sodium channels and they add to the total number of open voltage-gated channels. Through the, through the total number, which is bigger now, more sodium goes in and brings it upper towards minus 50, and then more and more voltage-gated sodium channels open. This is called a positive feedback for the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. And if we explain it in other words, first time the threshold is reached, let's say one voltage-gated sodium channel opens, and then more depolarization, and more depolarization in turn opens maybe 10 voltage-gated sodium channels, and there's more depolarization, which opens this time maybe 100 voltage-gated channels. And the number, the total number of participating voltage-gated sodium channels increase exponentially. And suddenly there's a very big number of voltage-gated sodium channels that are open. And a lot of sodium moves very quickly into the cell, producing the depolarization phase of our action potential. So, as you see that during the depolarization phase of the action potential, cell membrane becomes less and less negative. It reaches the zero millivolt level. In some cells, it barely reaches the zero millivolt level, but in some cells, it can even become positive and the piece of the action potential that is above the zero millivolt level is called an overshoot for us. So this is about the formation of the depolarization phase of our action potential. A threshold, voltage-gated sodium channels open by the opening of the activation gates, sodium moves into the cell. Some, in some cells, the membrane potential reaches barely the zero millivolt, but in some cells it goes over and it turns to positive millivolt values. Maximum point here, which is the peak 
of an action potential that was measured until now is something like plus 30 or plus 40 millivolts. As we see here, more, as more sodium goes into the cell, the membrane potential is moving towards the nearest potential of sodium. But in the action potential, the membrane potential never ever reaches the nearest potential of sodium, which is plus 61 in the example that we are using here. What? Let us examine the causes of this. This is because at this point the inactivation gates of voltage-gated sodium channels close. So if we go back to our example here, at the resting membrane potential level, activation gate was closed, inactivation gate was open. With, when the cell reaches the threshold, activation gate opens quickly, but inactivation gates is closing relatively slowly. So during the time when both of these gates are open, sodium is moving in. But the time during which sodium can move is limited by the closure of the inactivation gate, which happens in a very short period of time measured by milliseconds. So because the inactivation gate of voltage-gated sodium channels close, no more sodium can go into the cell and the membrane potential does not reach the nearest potential of sodium. So at the, this is one of the events that is happening at the peak of our action potential. But there is a second event that happens at the peak of action potential. If we go back to our figure here, we are going to see that until now, we talked about the completion of the, of the complete opening of the activation gates. We talked about complete closure of the inactivation gates. But what about voltage-gated potassium channels? They start to open exactly at the same threshold with the voltage-gated sodium channels, but they are relatively slow in their action, the gating action, and the, the voltage-gated potassium channels open only at the peak of the action potential here. So at the peak, which channels are open? Let us have a look at the channels that are open. These are going to determine the membrane potential and movement of the ions. At the peak, if the stimulation is lost, mechanically gated and ligand gated sodium channels will close. And then voltage gated sodium channels close because of inactivation gate. Only leak sodium channels are left, a very few sodium channels. But here, for, if we talk about the channels for potassium, there is an important amount of leak channels plus lots and lots and lots of voltage-gated potassium channels that are open, through which potassium will move out of the cell. As potassium moves out of the cell, the negatively charged ions will be left in the cell and potassium will carry out the positive charge and this is going to bring the membrane towards the resting membrane potential value. There's one last thing, that one last detail that we can talk about the action potential is that just like its opening, voltage-gated uh, potassium channels are a bit slow in closing. So at the end of the action potential, even though the cell membrane potential reaches the resting membrane potential level, potassium channels are a bit late in closing, so the membrane potential goes below the resting membrane potential, or in better words, it is a little bit hyperpolarized. This is called after hyperpolarization.
and it is due to the fact that potassium channels are closing slowly, but when they close, then the membrane potential quickly gets back to the resting membrane potential level. You are going to see in the books that this after hyperpolarization is drawn really big and I tried to draw it really big in this drawing as well. When you are making real measurements, it's not exactly like this. We try to make it, we try to exaggerate it to make it visible. But when there is only one action potential, it is almost invisible. The after hyperpolarization is known to be better visible when there is more than one action potential taking place in a neuron. So I have tried to summarize the basic information about an action potential. The action potential that we have talked about in this video is mostly the type of action potential that is observed in a neuron. But neurons are not the only excitable cells. There's also muscles. Uh, if you have a look at the muscles, the skeletal muscle has a similar action potential um, shape uh, depending on the similar ions that produce it. But when we talk about the cardiac muscle cells, they have a pretty different action potential because in them there is not only sodium and potassium ions at work, but there is also the involvement of the calcium ion. This type of a different action potential I am hoping to discuss in another video. Thank you for watching.